Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And nice to see you again for the second day of virtual training on the SDG 241. I hope you have had a nice end of the day yesterday, yesterday, and that you have talked a bit about all the discussion we have had uh, yesterday. So before starting, I would like to recap quickly what we have uh, seen yesterday. So we have introduced the SDG indicator 241, and as Fandjar explained us the part of the economic dimension and the methodology, so to calculate the first two sub-indicators. Uh, it has been a very intense uh, uh, day, full of concepts, and many doubts have been clarified through the question and answer sessions. So today we will continue the presentation and the explanation of the remaining sub-indicators. Probably we will not be able to finish all of them, but it's not a problem, we will continue tomorrow. And today, the last session, uh, we will see uh, the GAGRIS and the 50 by 2030 initiative. And this session will be presented by a colleague of our division. Uh, so it's uh, 504 here in Italy at least. So I think uh, it's better to start immediately because today also will be a very intense day as we just seen. So I will go to Asfandiar for starting the session. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, good morning to all of you. Good uh, afternoon and good evening. Uh, uh, so we will start from where we left yesterday. Um, so let me just share my screen with you first. Okay, so yesterday we covered the indicator framework in, gen in general, and then we covered two sub-indicators in the economic dimension of the three in total. Uh, we covered farm output value per hectare, and secondly, um, the net farm income sub-indicators. Today, we are gonna cover the third and the last sub-indicators, uh, sub-indicator in the economic dimension. The theme is resilience. The coverage is all farm types that are considered within the context of SG241. And the reference period is last calendar year. Uh, well, resilience as a concept has emerged as a key factor that needs to be assessed in, um, in sustainability. Resilience encompass absorptive, anticipatory, and adoptive capacities and refers to the properties of the system that allows agriculture holdings to deal with external shocks and stresses. Um, this is to persist and to continue to be well-functioning and other benefits and to provide other benefits to, to its members. So, in the context of SDG 241, the following external shocks are considered. Remember, I'm stressing the word external shocks. So um, within the framework of, uh, of uh, SDG 241, when we talk of resilience, we see as to whether the agriculture holdings can absorb, subsist, and recover from external shocks, okay? So the first external shock of the many that is considered is drought, um, which is a prolonged period of abnormally low rain that leads to obviously shortages of, of water. The second shock considered is flood, which is an overflow of large amount of water beyond its what, uh, normal limits, especially over what is called normal dry land. The third one is pest atta attack, which is you know, typically a destructive insect or other animal that attack crops, food or livestock. 
this can include um, heat waves as well. And fourthly, market shocks. Any demand or supply shock that altered the price matching mechanism um, in the market. Um, for example, uh, price reduction for commodities produced by the agriculture holding or increases uh, in uh, prices of imports, et cetera, et cetera. So as a shock coping mechanism or mitigation strategy so that the agriculture holdings continue to be sustainable, the SDG 241 proposed that the holding should have the following risk mitigation mechanism. Um, access to or availed insurance. Um, while insurance is a protection measure to, 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 or preventive measure to protect the agriculture holding against external shocks. The second mitigation mechanism considered is access to or availed credit, both uh, um, obtained from both uh, from formal and informal sources, such as banks, relatives, or local money lenders. And thirdly, the fact if the agriculture holding is diversified, which is defined as a share of a single agriculture commodity or activity produced on the holding is not greater than 66% in the total value of production of the holding. So this definition is taken from international standard um, uh, industrial classification division four. So access to credit and or insurance is in turn defined as to whether a given service is available and the holder of the agriculture holding has um, sufficient means to, to access this service or obtain this service. Um, by means, we uh, you know, the, um, we, we, we mean that the required documents, collateral and positive credit histories, which, which, which is in a way a necessary condition for you to access the services um, exist, okay? Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, access to the one of the above three factors will allow the agriculture holding to prevent, resist, and adopt as well recover from external shocks, which I just explained, floods, droughts, market failure, price shock, climate shock, animal and pest attack, etc. Now, in terms of on-farm diversification, let us discuss that a bit more. It captures the value of production of one single agriculture commodity, as I explained earlier, our total value of production of the agriculture holding. And we see as to whether the value of this formula is above or below 66%. If, if it is above 66%, this means that the farm is not diversified. If it is below 66%, we say that the farm is more or less diversified, okay? So the formula is very simple on farm diversification, value of production of you know, um, a single commodity divided by total value of production. So I here means uh, ith agricultural holding and C is uh, you know, the commodity produced uh, by, by, the, by, by that particular agricultural holding. Now, the information for this formula, again, we need not to collect any new information. The information or the data that, that was collected within the context of um, farm output value per hectare, those questions are sufficient to give us the information for, for this formula, okay? Because we will have commodity-wise information for crop as well as livestock from which we will, we will derive the total value of production and we will also have the value of production of that particular commodity. 
so no new information or no new data needs to be needs to be collected so in a way now that you see the the questions for the for these three sub indicators at least in the economic dimension rely on the on the same questions in the in the agriculture survey now in terms of sustainability criteria the agriculture holding is considered resilient or classified as resilient if it has a yield in the past or has means to access the following risk mitigation mechanisms so by the following risk mitigation i mean to say access to our yield insurance access to our yield credit and on farm diversification keep in keep that in mind so if the holding has access to our yield at least two of the three mitigation mechanisms then it will be classified as green if it has access to at least one of the three mitigation mechanism then it will be high classified as yellow and if it has no access to the three mitigation mechanisms then it will be obviously um classified as as red now this is the data that we have collected within the context of the bangladesh pilot tests that i was referring to yesterday as you as you can see and we will cover this in detail in the excel sheet but we administer a set of questions we ask the farmer as to whether he has access to our availed credit or whether he has access to our availed insurance so one question is on that and then the rest of the information on the on farm diversification as, as i just explained is coming from the same question which are used to collect information for land productivity sub indicator so this is the first bit of the information so this information is coming from the from the question that i showed you yesterday this is the new question access to our well credit access to insurance etc so as you can see here holding one agriculture holding one the share of a single commodity in its output value is 76% okay it's producing two commodities of which the share of one commodity is 76% the second commodity is 24% <coughs> excuse me so as per the criteria which i just explained to you on the previous slide this one we see we calculate and then see as to whether the share of a single commodity is greater than 66% if it is greater than 66% the farm is classified as non diversified okay so 76% here means that this farm is non diversified it's relying heavily for its value of output on one single commodity and hence it's very vulnerable to external shocks in in case of a certain kind of pest attack or market failure or or any other external event because of the fact that this firm is or this agriculture holding is producing only one type of crop is highly exposed or vulnerable to those shocks so hence on the on farm diversification um, criteria this farm or this agriculture holding doesn't score you know um, anything access to credit however this agriculture holding replied yes access to insurance this holding said yes so of of the three mitigation mechanism on farm diversification credit and insurance this holding has access to two and as i explained on the previous slide if the holding has access to or availed two out of the three mitigation mechanism it will be classified as is green so hence this holding is classified as green now the second agriculture holding holding 3 as you can see here it's it's evenly dependent on the three uh, commodities that it is producing 
um, and hence, you know, the share of every single commodity is less than 66%. We classify this holding as, as diversified. However, it doesn't have access to the two other mitigation mechanisms. It has, of, of the three, it has only, um, you know, access to one and hence this holding is classified as yellow or acceptable. And lastly, holding four, as you can see here, all of the output is generated by one single commodity. In fact, this holding is monoculture. Um, and it doesn't have access to other mitigation mechanisms. It scores zero. So of the three, it has access to none. And hence, we classify this holding as non-sustainable or red. Now, the last step, which, I, which I've been explaining to you as part of the other sub-indicators as well, remains the same. So once we classify the agriculture holding as green, yellow, or red, we associate the same sustainability statuses to the agriculture land area of those particular holdings. We then add up the areas um, classified as greens, yellows, and red, and we divide by the nationally representative agriculture land area to calculate these proportions. So let me now go to the go to the Excel sheet. Stefania, can you see that? Yes. Yes, sir, Bob, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So as I was explaining earlier, as part of my slides, you know, there are a set of questions where no new information needs to get collected. That information, at least for one of the mitigation mechanism, which is on farm diversification, is coming from the questions um, from the same questions that that, that um, you know basically generate information for the land productivity and profitability sub indicator. So as you can see here, these questions remain the same. Question number A2: What was the total value of crops and its byproduct produced by the holding? So this information stays the same. Is the same question, the same data, which I showed you earlier within uh, for, both for productivity as well as profitability sub indicator. So we calculate information on the crops, its area, uh, along with the unit of measure, the quantity produced, the average or latest prices, if these two doesn't exist, then the value of production. Likewise, we collect information about the byproducts, its quantity produced, average or latest price, or value of production, what, whichever exists. On, on, you know, and, and we collect information on that. And likewise, um, you know, similarly for, uh, for livestock and its byproducts. So I'm not gonna go into this question because I already went through it in, um, in fairly uh, detailed way yesterday. So the same, same similar kind of information is collected uh, or ex exactly the same kind of information is collected. Let me correct myself. So, and then, you know, so information on other on-farm activities, on-farm secondary activities produced by the holding or practiced by the holding. Now, so that information stays the same. So we need not to have any additional question for the diversification part. Now, as I was explaining earlier, we still have to ask information about two other um, risk coping mechanisms, okay, or risk mitigation mechanisms, which is credit and insurance. So we ask a simple question in the survey module, uh, did this holding have access to or availed any of the following mechanism for protection against external shocks? Okay, and the reference is last calendar year, and then the option is this holding had access to or availed credit. This holding had access to or availed insurance. Um, and then lastly, neither the holding had access to 
nor availed any of the above mechanisms for protection against external shocks. Okay. So only this is an additional question which need to get asked and then it gives us all the information that is required for us to build this or construct this particular sub indicator. Now, the for the denominator, obviously, the, 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 the question remain the same. So I'm not going to go through this. We collect information about the agricultural land area of the holding by land use classes. Okay. And then, you know, we confirm these land use classes, but this information needs not to get collected every time repeatedly within the context of each sub indicator. It's collected only once and we then we use that information for, for all sub indicators combined. So let me go through the steps. Okay, let me go through the formulas and the requisite analysis that needs to be carried out for us to construct these sub indicators. So the first step is, again, you know, it stays the same, like in the case of productivity and profitability sub indicator. So we, once the information on average prices is collected by commodities, as well as the quantities of those particular commodities, we, we, we then present this maybe in a table or something, okay? So, once we have that, then we estimate the value of production for each particular commodity. And that is very simple. We just multiply the average or the latest, you know, farm gate prices by the physical quantities or unit estimated in, in, a, in a standard unit of measurement to estimate the value of production in local currency units. Okay. So once we do that, we add all the value of production for all the commodities for us to estimate the value of output for the entire holding. And as you can see here, this number stay the same because you know we, we, we are using the same information. Now the, the third step is for us to remember for us to estimate the percentage contribution of each commodity to the value of production of the of the farm based on which we will be assigning the farm diversification status right so it's very simple we what we need to do is you know we just need to divide the respective contribution of each commodity uh, value of production divided by the total value of production which is 1477 and then we see as to whether the share of, uh, of this commodity is above, is equal to or above or below 66%. So if it is above 66%, we consider that holding as non-diversified. If it is below 66%, then we say that agriculture holding is diversified, okay? And as you can see here, we divide the respective output, value of output of each commodity by the total value of production. And for this particular agriculture holding, none of the commodity is exceeding 66%. So we, we, we just, you know, basically, um, analyze this for the top three commodities. We can do it for all, like the way we did in the above table. And then we see as to whether it's exceeding 66%. And as you can see here, it's not. Okay. However, this holding doesn't have access to or availed uh, credit, but has access to or availed insurance. So from diversification perspective, this holding is diversified. It doesn't have access to credit. It, it has access to or available insurance. And hence, out of the three, this holding comply with two risk mitigation mechanisms or has adopted two risk mitigation mechanisms. And hence, as per our traffic light approach, 
this holding is classified as desirable because out of three, it has access to two mitigation mechanisms. And we do the same exercise then for all agriculture holdings that are part of the sample, right? And, and we see as to, and classify the holdings accordingly, okay? So let, let me pick holding number four it's here. As you can see here for holding number four, the share of a single commodity is 100%. So it's producing one single, one single crop or maybe one single, it's raising one single livestock, right? And from this perspective, this holding is extremely vulnerable to external shocks. Um, now, so, so this holding is monoculture or maybe it's producing only one single commodity, so it's uh, highly risky. So diversification is known, access to a well credit, no, access to a well insurance, no. So this holding is classified as threat and so on. So we, we repeatedly do the same kind of um, analysis based on the information collected for all agriculture holdings, which are part of the sample, of course, and then we assign sustainability statuses to the agriculture holdings. And then as a secondary step, as a follow-up step, we associate the same statuses to the agricultural land area of those particular holdings. Okay. And then by now you may know, we add up the area greens, yellows, and, and, and reds, okay? And we divide by the nationally representative agricultural land area to estimate the proportions, okay? So I stop here. Sure. So now we have completed the the first dimension of SDG 241. Remember, we have three dimensions, economic, environmental, and social. Within the economic dimension, we had three sub-indicators, which we covered already. Farm output value per hectare, net farm income, and risk mitigation mechanism. Now we have um, you know, entered, now we will cover the second dimension of SCG 241, which is the environmental dimension. Remember, uh, this particular dimension has five sub-indicators, which we will cover in turn. Um, so the very first one within, the, within this dimension is prevalence of soil degradation. The theme is soil health. The coverage is all farm types and the reference period for this particular sub indicator again is last three calendar years. Now, just to give you some context, FAO and the intergovernmental technical panels on, so on soils have identified in fact, 10 major threats to soil health. Okay, so there are 10 major threats um, that can negatively impact the soil health. So let me go through it. So the first one is soil erosion, soil organic carbon losses, nutrient imbalances, acidification, contamination of the soil, water logging, compaction, soil sealing, salinization and loss of biodiversity. So the, for us to properly assess the soil health, we have to look into these 10 different threats, okay? And then based on that, we can then say as to whether this soil is healthy or this soil is unhealthy. Now, obviously, within the context of 241, 
as I was explaining earlier, seeking additional information on anything means additional questions within the agriculture survey. And hence, we wanted to avoid that. So we were closely discussing this theme or this particular sub-indicator with, um, with experts. And uh, we tried to narrow it down, narrow down the, um, the, the, the 10 threats to as minimum as possible. So after a series of discussion and consultation with, with the systematic expert, as well as statisticians, um, we narrow it down to four. So out of 10, we focused only on four threats. Okay. Um, the reason why we can find ourselves to these four is because these are more of universal in nature. So these are applicable uh, across the globe to all countries. However, while we were developing the methodology, we said that, okay, we will confine ourselves to four, but then we, we gave flexibility to countries to report any other threats that they may think is relevant in their context, okay? So let me go through the threats. So the first one is soil erosion. So what do we mean by soil erosion? Soil erosion refers to the wearing away of the fields or, or the plot topsoil by the natural physical forces of water and wind. These can be affected, accelerated, or reduced as a function of farming activities, such as tillage, okay, amongst others. Then the second one is reduction in soil fertility. Now, fertility refers to the capacity of the soil to provide crops with essential nutrients without reduction in productivity over the years. Reduction in soil fertility implies a situation in which the capacity of the soil to provide crops with essential plant nutrients that are needed for its growth tends to reduce from one year to another. Okay. Then the third one is salinization, which is salt accumulation on the, on the agricultural land surface and water logging refers to a situation of water stagnation on the, on the land surface or excessive volume of water on the land surface affecting production. So these are the four that we have shortlisted and recommend for countries to collect information on. But there will be many countries who will say that salinization or water logging or reduction in soil fertility or maybe soil erosion, right? Soil fertility may be relevant to everyone, but soil erosion, salinization, water logging, one of this is not relevant to us in our context. And hence, we give this flexibility to countries whereby we say, okay, so if there is another threat on top of these four, or if you want to replace one of these four with another one, which is uh, prevalent in your country, then you can do so. Um, now, within the context of 241, let me clarify one, one additional point. Um, as, as, as by now you may have seen, we are collecting information um, from the farmer uh, based on his declaration about the economic performance of the holding, which we covered in the, in the economic dimension. Uh, and in the environmental dimension, we again are using this which subjective uh, uh, measure, okay, which is, which is a farmer declaration. So we are asking the farmer his knowledge or experience or his practices um, pertaining to uh, a given environmental related issue on his agriculture holding. And we understand that it's not objectively measured, okay? At FAO, we considered both subjective as well as objective uh, uh, means of measuring the environmental impacts of, uh, um, of agriculture. Um, so, 
as I was explaining, a simple question is asked in the farm survey to capture farmers' knowledge or declaration about the situation of agriculture holding in terms of soil degradation. Um, so in reality, in, in you know, in, uh, or ideally, all soils under agricultural land area in a country should be a subject of periodic monitoring in order to assess the impact of agriculture on soils. And when I say periodic monitoring, this typically includes maps maintained by, by certain agencies uh, within or institutions within countries for the agricultural land area, models, um, and results from soil sampling and laboratory analysis. So the best way, so the best way for you to assess, like say, for example, soil fertility is to go to the field, dig a hole at different places within the same plot, take it to the lab and assess it as to what nutrients this particular soil is lacking, um, lacking on. Now, Initially, when we were developing, um, you know, the uh, prevalence of soil degradation sub indicator, we resorted to those objective measures, and we were we were recommending to countries for them to implement soil uh, testing, uh, you know, facilities for them to be able to assess their soil scientifically and objectively. But soon, many of the countries with whom we shared that version of the methodology in the past, especially developing ones, they replied to us and say, and, 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 uh, and raise this concern that conducting soil sampling within each agriculture holding, right, uh, would, the, the cost would be prohibitive. It would, you know, we, we, we will not be able to um, provide you with with such a detailed and objective information, which is which is very costly to collect, and hence then we revised the methodology for us to focus on the more subjective measure, which I just explained is based on formal declaration. So, but always the the recommendation from FAO is that. Even if you are collecting this information in agriculture survey, if more objective information exists somewhere else within the country, that information should be complemented uh, with the farm survey uh, data, um, you know, to, to interpret or uh, to cross check uh, farmers responses or the agriculture holders responses. Now, in terms of how do we classify agriculture holdings, the criteria is very simple. We ask farmers a couple of questions. First, asking him as to whether he has experienced these four threats on his uh, agriculture holding in the past uh, three years. And if he say yes, then we ask him a follow-up question as to what was the combined area affected by any of the four selected threats to soil health. And based on that, then we assign him or his or her agriculture holding green, yellow, or red statuses. So if the combined area affected by any of the four selected threats to soil health, so it could either be salinization, soil erosion, water logging, or reduction in soil fertility, if any or all combinedly affect less than 10% of the area of the, of the agriculture holding, then the holding will be classified as, as green. If the combined area affected by these four threats is between 10 to 50% of the total agriculture area of the farm, then we classify it as yellow. And if the combined area affected is greater than 50% of the total agriculture holding area, then it will be classified as, as red. So 
So as I was explaining to you that we ask, um, you know, a set of questions to the farmer. Uh, at maximum, I, I believe two. And based on that, um, we then uh, analyze the data. So holding one, we ask the question, okay, do you have any of these four threats on, um, you, did, did you experience any of these four threats on your agriculture holding? The response was no, yes, yes to water logging, no to salinization. The total agriculture area, agriculture land area of this holding is 0.9%, 0.9 hectares, sorry. This information has already been collected and it's needed for each sub indicator as a denominator. So there is nothing new. The total area affected, we ask this directly to the farmer. So what do you think? How much area of your agriculture holding is affected by these four threats? Okay. And he said 0 0.40 hectares. We simply divide this by the total agricultural land area to estimate the percentage area affected based on which then we assign the green, yellow, or red stratuses. Okay. So if you remember, we said that if the area affected is between 10 to 50%, it will be classified as yellow. Holding three, experience none, its total area is 0.2 hectare. Zero percent is affected. Obviously the area affected is zero percent. It's classified as desirable. Holding four, experience two threats, soil erosion and reduction in soil fertility. The total area is 0 0.27 hectares. Total area affected is 0 0.20 hectares. The total in terms of percentage is 74%. And hence this holding is classified as non-sustainable and so on. Okay, we repeat the same kind of uh, uh, step for all agriculture holdings and, you know, we assign sustainability status. And lastly, the, 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 the steps remain the same. We then um, add up the areas classified as green, yellows and reds. We divide by the nationally representative agricultural land area to estimate these proportions. So let me go to the Excel sheet now. Uh, Tomar or Stefania, can you confirm if you can see yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yes. Perfect. So, as I was explaining, the first question that we asked within the survey module is, have you experienced any of the following soil degradation threats on your holding? Okay. So, this is the very first question. The reference period is last three calendar years. Soil erosion, reduction in soil fertility, water logging, salinization and other specify, okay? If he says, or she says yes to any of the options, then we ask her or him as to what is the total area of the holding affected by, by the threats identified above, okay? So the total area affected. And that's it. This is the only information that we seek. So we ask simply two questions. And based on the, the, these two questions, we, we then uh, start assigning sustainability statuses to the agriculture holding and the agriculture land area of the country. Rest of the information remain the same. I mean, as you can see here, this question is getting repeated from the previous sub-indicators. 
but we just kept it there so that everyone um, is um, just 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 to keep your memories refreshed that we still need inf information on the denominator of each particular uh, sub indicator but this this information is just just needs to get collected once and that's it now in terms of the of the steps required to analyze the, the data so we collect information based on the first question the farmer or the holder said no to soil erosion yes to reduction in soil fertility yes to water logging no to salinization no to others okay so this is the first table we then ask him about the total area affected okay and it was told to us by the farmer that the total combined area is affected is five the agricultural land area of the holding we already know is nine we divide it to calculate the share of agriculture area affected and this is all the information that we need okay. sorry it's not showing up properly but um, as i was mentioning the holding will be classified as green um, if the combined area affected is less than 10%, it will be highlighted as yellow. If it is between 10 and 50%, and it will be highlighted as, or classified as red, if it is above 50%. So let's pick any holding, okay? Let's pick uh, holding number three. So yes to these two threats, no to water logging and salinization, no to others. Total agriculture area in, in hectares, it's 20 hectares. Total area affected is 1.9 hectare. The percentage estimated to be, if we divide this by the total agricultural area, 9.50, and hence this holding is classified as desirable because the total area affected is less than 10% and so on. And lastly, once we do that, we, the same step, we add up the area greens, yellows and red, and we divide by the nationally representative agricultural land area collected using the same agriculture survey, by the way, uh, to estimate these proportions. Okay, I stop here. We have one question. So instead of insurance and credit, can we consider government aid during emergencies as substitute to credit and insurance? Um, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. But you know, credit and insurance is something that uh, government aid or government grant or government support in case of negative events is something which is which is which is not in your control, right? Which is which you cannot control. I mean, the government may or may not, depending on as to whether it has sufficient resources available at that point in time, support the farmer or not. Okay, so that's something which is. Uh, which uh, which is conditional on the on the government wishes and its 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 sweet will, right? Uh, on the flip side, insurance and credit is something which the farmer um, has, which the farmer has in his or her control. By that I mean to say, if it has, if he or she has sufficient. Um, you know, um, resources in terms of credit history, in terms of uh, trustworthiness, in terms of collateral, and in terms of uh, other means to access these two services, he, he or she, him or herself can insulate his or her agricultural holding against these external events. The government support or uh, is something which is, which is, I, I, you know, we, we are not sure about that, right? 
it may or may not give support to the to the farmer so we cannot based on as to whether the government is supporting uh, a given area or given agriculture holdings in a certain time period um, we cannot at least you know as for the methodology of this particular sub indicator is concerned is not built into it another question from japan how do you determine the extent of an investigation for example in case of erosion to what degree is it determined that erosion is observed observed now the implicit assumption obviously here is of course as i was mentioning earlier when i started presenting the sub indicator i said that we should be using more objective measurement tools for us to estimate um, the extent of these threats to soil health okay whether it's erosion whether it's uh, um, soil fertility salinization or water logging now because of the fact that we are resorting to more subjective way of us analyzing um the impact of these negative threats from this perspective we are totally relying on on uh, farmers declaration okay and we believe um and and some of you may agree that farmers by and large in general are very clever people okay usually you know these people are practicing agriculture for if if not centuries at least for for decades and years okay so they exactly know as to what kind of problem they have on which part of their agricultural land area of their holding so if you ask them they will exactly tell you my you know that plot or that field of my holding is not performing well because of xyz reason now whether he has um uh, in terms of output he will know that you know this particular uh, plot of mine is giving me less output because of you know salinization because of soil erosion because of um, um my land is not fertile okay so we i agree here it's a more subjective um, you know uh, sub, uh, measurement uh, approach but in any case this is um, this is what we um, you know devised in collaboration with uh, um, with uh, colleagues like yourself especially especially the colleagues from nso as well as ministry of agriculture so this is what we are offering but if there are more objective um you know um approaches for data collection available as i mentioned those should be complemented with the farm survey results so we are not completely ruling out that you only uh, rely on farm survey results for you to make your analysis but if more objective more reliable more precise information from a from a source that is considered as a gold standard for that particular uh, for that particular uh, aspect or phenomena then you know that should be considered as well in combination with the farm survey results to have a better understanding of the situation um, which is uh, prevalent uh, in, in in that particular area or in that particular agricultural holding another question for from fiching cambodia how to select the households and co to collect the data in a territory for example district level province level for a territory representation so this is something which is um, obviously um it's explained in one of the document that we have produced as a support document for sg241 uh which we call the sampling guidelines or sampling guidance on sg241 so from this perspective um 
the level of granularity or the level of detail that you want to build in for you to get disaggregated results by by different administrative levels is entirely up to the country for us as i mentioned earlier uh, for fao or for international reporting we only expect country to be reporting national level national level numbers or national level estimates for sg 241 and its sub indicators um but you know you can go up to any extent i mean the, as i was mentioning earlier the indicator is scale independent and it can be uh, produced and reproduced for uh, for detailed administrative um, levels uh, you know um, it could be generated at a province level it could be generated at district even you know you can go below if you have uh, a lower rung of administrative level in, in place in your country so for us we only need national figures for for your own policy making you may want to consider disaggregating results by by different uh, geographies and dis different administrative levels hello welcome back we can resume now the sessions and we will continue with the uh, uh, environmental dimension. As Pandya, you have the floor. Welcome back. Okay, welcome back to all of us. So, we were discussing the first sub indicator in the environmental dimension, which was prevalence of soil degradation. Now, the second sub indicator in the environmental dimension is variation in water availability. Okay. The theme is water use, the coverage is all farm types, and the reference period for this particular sub indicator is also set at three calendar years. Now, agriculture as many of you may know, more specifically irrigated agriculture is by far the main economic sector using freshwater resources. Um, in many places, water withdrawal from rivers and groundwater aquifers is beyond what can be considered environmentally sustainable. Um, so sustainable agriculture therefore requires that the level of use of fresh water for irrigation remains within the acceptable boundaries. While there is no internationally agreed standard of water use sustainability, signals associated with unsustainable use of water typically include progressive reduction in level of groundwater, drying out of springs and rivers, and increased conflicts amongst water users in case of water shortages. This sub indicator captures the extent to which agriculture contributes to unsustainable patterns of water use. Now, irrigation used on the holding means that water, other than rain, of course, is applied to crops at least once during the entire reference period that is last three calendar years. So to elaborate further, water can be sourced using different methods, using well irrigation, which is a method of irrigation where underground water is tapped to a well. It could be a tube well or an open well. Secondly, water supplied directly by diverting it from rivers through canals, that is gravity, or pumping it from river, lake, or groundwater. And third, water can be applied on the field through sprinklers or micro irrigation or drip irrigation. Um, in terms of water allocation, in many countries, water allocation to agriculture holdings is implemented by organizations mandated to ensure the delivery of water to different users according to established rules. These organizations are typically called water users organizations water boards, 
water districts, etc., which can be public, owned by the farmers, or it could also be a consortium of private operators. So how do we go about us determining as to whether the agriculture sector is green in terms of its water usage, yellow or red? So we will classify the agriculture holding as green if the water availability remains stable over the years for agriculture holdings, irrigating crops on more than 10% of its agriculture area. Okay. Green will be a default result um, if the agriculture holding is irrigating uh, less than 10% of its agriculture area. Now, try to understand that for this particular sub-indicator and, uh, um, and the two others that we are going to cover in turn, we are assessing the impact of agriculture on the environment. So if the agriculture holding is not using water for irrigation, it's not contributing negatively to the water shortages uh, problems in first place. So hence, you know, uh, the second condition, um, if the holding is using water on less than 10% of its agriculture area, it will be classified as green. Um, if it is irrigating um, more than 10% of it, its area, then the water availability should remain stable, according to farmer declaration, of course. The agriculture holding will be classified as yellow if uh, the holding uses water to irrigate crop on at least 10% of the agriculture area of the farm. Um, and it doesn't know whether the water availability remains stable over the years or experience reduction in water availability over the years. But there is um, these uh, water users organizations that effectively allocate water amongst the users. And red will be in all other cases. Um, just to elaborate further, the holding uses water on more than 10% of its agriculture area the water availability is going or the water um, um, availability um, is not stable and the farmer is experiencing reduction in water availability over the years and there is no organization that effectively allocates water then in that case the holding will be classified as has red now like for other indicators we ask uh, a couple of questions to the farmer First, we ask them as to whether they are using water for irrigation. If the answer is yes, we move to the next question. And we ask him as to whether he has experienced or observed reduction in water availability over the years. Um, and, and, and depending on the answer to that question, if the answer is yes, if he has or she has experienced reduction in water availability, then we ask you know, the farmer as to whether there are organizations that effectively allocate water amongst the different users. And based on the results of these two or three questions, we then assign the agriculture holding and its agriculture area sustainability status is uh, green, yellow, and red. So let's focus on holding one. Um, this holding replied um, yes to the question that yes, they're using water for irrigation. We then ask them how much area are they irrigating? You know, this holding says 89.7%. And then we ask them as to whether he has experienced reduction in water availability. And this holding said, no, water is always available in sufficient quantity. Hence, we classify this holding as, as desirable because the water level is stable in the area in which this holding is operating. The second holding says, yes, they have experienced reduction in water level in their wells, and it is progressively going down. We then ask the follow-up question as to whether there are organizations that effectively ration or allocate water equitably across different users. And the, he replied, yes, they're working well. And hence, we 
classify this holding as as acceptable. Um, and the third condition and the third holding, in fact, they said, yes, water availability is going down. Water, uh, water is in fact, uh, water level is going down in, in his or her wells. And there are no organization to deal with water allocation. This holding is user, using water to irrigate 74% of its agricultural area. And hence we classify this holding as unsustainable. And the last result is the same. We then aggregate the area classified as greens, yellows, and red. We add it up. We divide it by the nationally representative agriculture area to calculate the proportions for, for this indicator by sustainability statuses. So as I was explaining in the presentation, these are the questions that we asked to the farmer or the holder of the agriculture holding. So the first question is, did this agriculture holding use, use water to irrigate crops? And a set of options are given. Yes, if the answer is yes, then we ask about the area uh, of the holding that the farmer is irrigating. Of course, the unit of my year is captured as well. And then if no, then you know we, we have a set of responses. No, I don't need irrigation. No, I cannot afford irrigation. No, there is no water available, okay? So depending on the, um, the different uh, answers, we may um, have, um, we, we may have to carry out different kind of analysis. So if the answer is yes to the first question, yes, I irrigate, uh, I use water to irrigate area of my holding. We then ask, are you observing any reduction in water availability from wells or other sources? Okay. Uh, because for irrigation, it could be, you know, lift irrigation from lack, lakes, canals, and rivers as well. And then, you know, a set of options are given no water is always available in sufficient quantity when I need it. Yes, water levels in my wells is progressively going down. Yes, water in the river, lake or canal is getting scarce and I cannot have reliable supply when I need it. I don't know. And then, you know, the third question, are there organization dealing with water allocation in the area where this holding is located? And a set of options, yes, they, they are working well. Yes, but they are not working well. No, there are none, I don't know, okay? And then of course, for the denominator, we ask the same question about the land use, okay? So based on the these three questions about the irrigation um, uh, usage, the, the reduction, in water availability and organization dealing with water allocation, we assign sustainability statuses to the agriculture holdings and its agriculture land area. So the first step, of course, is to analyze the information that has been collected. So for let's focus on holding one. Use of water to irrigate crops, yes. Reduction in water availability experience, no, always water is always available in sufficient quantity. Organization dealing with water allocation, um, I don't know, but we really don't care about, about the answer to this question because you know the first question is sufficient for us to assign sustainability status to the agriculture holding. Um, the total area irrigated by this particular holding is uh, also captured. So it's um, six hectares out of nine, which is which amounts to 66.67 percent of the entire agriculture land area of the holding. And then the sustainability criteria, which I explained to you, is part of the presentation. 
So let's focus on the first holding. Yes, this holding is using water for irrigation. No water is always available in sufficient quantity. Irrespective of how much area this holding is irrigating, because the water is available in sufficient quantity and the level is stable, we assign it a green status. Use water to irrigation, I don't know. Yes, they are working well. Um, area irrigated is only one hectare, less than 10%. So that is a sufficient condition for us to assign this holding a desirable status. So if you go above and see this, the very first criteria, it is water availability remains stable over the years for farm irrigated crops on more than 10% of its agriculture area. And it's a default result for farms irrigating less than 10% of its agriculture area. In this case, because it's irrigating less than 10%, it is classified as, as green and so on. So based on the condition that we have developed, we assign the agriculture holdings and its agricultural land area, different statuses. And then of course, we, once the statuses are assigned to the agriculture holdings, we then add up the areas classified as greens, yellows, and reds, and divided by the nationally representative area for us to estimate the, the proportions or the percentages. So I stop here. Please, if you have any question, we don't have any for, for now. No questions, sir, from there. Let's wait for a minute mm -hmm. and then I can proceed. I take this occasion for informing all of you that we will be sending all the presentations and also all the relevant material after the fourth day with the, uh, an email that will uh, summarize all of this we have said and we have agreed. No questions, Asfandia. I think we can move on with the next one. Okay, so let's move to the next um, sub indicator in the environmental dimension. In fact, the third one in the environmental dimension and the sixth one in the entire framework of SG241. So, in the context of 241, sustainable agriculture implies that the level of chemicals in the soil and water bodies remains within the acceptable thresholds. Now, the theme for this particular sub-indicator is fertilizer risk. The coverage is all farm types. The reference period is last calendar year. Now, this sub-indicator, like the others, is constructed using data collected to a set of questions asked to the farmer. Um, about their use of fertilizer, in particular, um, the synthetic and mineral fertilizers, animal manure and slurry, their awareness about environmental risks associated with the use of fertilizers, and their behavior in terms of plant nutrient ma um, management. So here are the set of eight measures, eight management measures or practices um, that were discussed with, uh, with experts and have been selected to assign the agriculture holding sustainability statuses, green, yellow, and red, depending on the extent to which the holding is practicing these measures, okay? So I'm not gonna go through the eight measures. Um, these, have very, uh, these have been very well explained in, of course, in the numerator manual and other support documents. So all the, all the, practices that are listed here, um, uh, we, we see 
you know, out of the eight, if the holding is practicing, like say, for example, four, then we assign it green status. If it is practicing uh, less than four, then it is uh, assigned uh, yellow statuses. Uh, and if it is, um, you know, uh, one or less than one, then it is assigned a red status. So let me just show you the sustainability criteria. If the holding uses fertilizer, okay, but take at least four specific measures to mitigate environmental risk, then it will be classified as green. Uh, another condition is if the holding is not using any fertilizer whatsoever, then of course it's not contributing negatively to the environment in terms of fertilizer usage and hence this holding will be classified as, as green by default. The holding is classified as yellow if, the, if it is using uh, or practicing at least two measures to mitigate environmental risk and the holding um, is classified as red if it is using fertilizer but, take, but doesn't take any measures from the eight listed here to mitigate the negative impact of fertilizer usage on the environment, then it will be classified as, as red. So here is again, you know, a snapshot of the results um, that uh, we were able to analyze for Bangladesh pilot tests back in 2018 and 19. Um, so let's focus on holding one. We ask a question as to whether this holding is using fertilizer. If the answer is yes, we go, then go to the follow-up question. We ask the farmer while explaining each measure, right? We ask them as to what measures are they practicing currently out of the eight. And as you can see here, this holding is using fertilizer, yes. Out of the eight, this holding has adopted or is practicing only two measures, okay? And as per the criteria listed here, the farm uses fertilizer and take at least two specific measures to mitigate environmental risk. It is assigned yellow or acceptable status. Holding two is using fertilizer and is using none of the measure or has adopted none of the measure and hence it is classified as is non-sustainable. Holding 37 is not using fertilizer at all, okay? And hence, we don't even go to the second question by asking them about the measures. We automatically classify it as desirable and so on, okay? So based on the conditions that we have built, that we have developed, we assign the agriculture holding and its agriculture land area sustainability statuses by looking the extent to which they are applying these eight measures related to um, the usage of fertilizer uh, on its agriculture holding. And the last step obviously is remains the same once the sustainability statuses are assigned based on the responses given by the farmer or the holder of the agriculture holding um, to the set of two questions we assign sustainability statuses to the holding as well as to its agricultural land area. We then aggregate the areas classified as greens, yellows, and red, and divided by the nationally representative area to estimate the proportions. So let me go to the Excel sheet. So as I was mentioning in the survey module that we have developed, we ask a couple of questions. The first is, did this agriculture holding used any synthetic or mineral fertilizer or any manure or slurry for crops? The answer could be yes or no. If the answer is no, we don't go further, okay? We just classify the holding as green by default. If the answer is yes, we then go to the follow-up question. Did this holding take specific measure to mitigate the environmental risk associated with the usage of synthetic and mineral fertilizer? Yes or no? If yes, then we go to the 
next question and we ask about this um these eight specific measures okay uh, these ones which i which i showed you as part of the presentation and then we see to what extent or which measures are practiced by the agricultural holding and based on that we assign the holding sustainability statuses so let's focus on holding one they use fertilizer yes we then see as to how many measures have they adopted or comply with so they have adopted in total three of the eight and then based on the logic which i explained um, for the sustainability criteria we assign the agriculture holding green yellows and red statuses okay so as you can see here you know in this case this holding will be assigned acceptable status because the farm uses fertilizer and take at least two specific measures to mitigate environmental risk hence it will be classified as sao holding four is using fertilizer and take four measures hence it is classified as green and holding nine is not using any fertilizer whatsoever so it's not negatively contributing to the environment in terms of fertilizer usage so it is classified as green as well and so on then we assign the sustainability status to the agricultural land area of the respective holding and then lastly we aggregate the areas greens yellows and reds divided by the agricultural national representative agricultural land area to estimate the proportions so i will stop here so the fourth sub indicator in the environmental dimension is management of uh, pesticides the dimension is one environmental of course the theme is pesticide risk the coverage is all farm types the reference period is um, last calendar year now to contextualize pesticides are important input inputs in modern agriculture but if not well managed they can cause harm to people health or as well to the environment okay the proposed sub indicator is based on information on the use of pesticides on the farm the type of pesticide use and the type of measure taken to mitigate the associated risk with pesticide usage now again let me emphasize that there are other gold standards okay there 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 could very well be other data collection tools and approaches which will give us more objective results um vis-a-vis -vis the farmer declaration that we are using within the framework of sc241 but as tomar you know highlighted and i will elaborate on that in many developing countries uh, you know these objective measures of data collection like say for example soil sampling monitoring systems etc these doesn't exist and hence this was the the response that we got earlier in the process while we were developing the methodology many of the developing countries said that we don't have access to these kind of uh, uh, data collection systems and hence we would like you to simplify the methodology and thus we then shift it away from the gold standard measurement approaches for the for the sub indicators to a more subjective approach which is based on farmer responses or uh, his or her declaration so i wanted to highlight this point so in terms of the management of pesticides two sets of measures um have been devised or proposed okay to countries for them to see and then ask the farmer to what extent they are implementing so the first one is health related measures 
And the second one is environment related measures with usage of with usage of pesticides. So again, I'm not gonna go through the, the set of measures. These are self-explanatory and have been well explained in the, in the support documents, especially in the numerator manual. But just for the sake of, um, you know, um, to give you some kind of um, hint, the, in the health related measure, we ask as to whether the holding is adhering to label direction for pesticide use, including use of protection equipment while applying pesticides, maintenance and cleansing of protection equipment after use, and safe disposal of waste of uh, pesticides, that is cottons, bottles, and bags, and so on. Okay. And likewise, for the environment, we have a set of uh, seven measures. And then we see out of these two group of measures, to what extent the agriculture holding is adopting, adopting these measures. So this is how the sustainability criteria or the thresholds for this particular sub indicator uh, have been designed. So if the agriculture holding uses only moderately or slightly hazardous pesticides, WHO class two and three, in this case, it adheres to all three health related measures and at least four out of seven of the environment related measures. Okay. So if the holding class, you know, qualifies or comply with this criteria, they will be classified as green. Now, don't get carried away by the terminology moderately or slightly hazardous pesticide because these have been well explained by World Health Organization. There are guidelines to which a reference has been given in the support document. And um, you, uh, the, the interviewer as well as the interviewee or the respondent can e easily identify as to whether the pesticides that they are using are slightly moderately or slightly hazardous or extremely or highly hazardous, okay? So we will provide you, this has already been provided, but you know, if need be, we can, we can share the WHO class two and three with you again. The second condition is, if the agriculture holding is not using any pesticide whatsoever, it's not contributing to um, the harm to the environment in terms of fertilizer, uh, for a pesticide usage in first place. And hence, we will classify those agriculture holding is, is green by default. Now, one point that I would like to highlight is that FAO by no means is recommending farmers not to use pesticides because from, from the second condition, it seems like FAO is asking countries not to use pesticides. No, it's not the case. Think of it, you know, uh, of this criteria as we are approaching the impact of agriculture on the environment. So if the farms are not using pesticide in first place, they're not contributing to the environmental problem and hence they're green. Um, but if they're using pesticide, they should comply with the set of practices, which will safeguard both the health of the people working on the holding as well as the environment um, um, in which um, uh, that particular agriculture holding is operating. The holding will be classified as as yellow, if it is using slightly or moderately hazardous pesticide, again, WHO class two and three, and take at least two measures, each from health and environment, okay? And the farm uh, will be classified as red if it uses highly or extremely hazardous pesticide. Again, this has been defined and explained by WHO, um, you know, in its guidelines, it's called class 1A and 1B, if the holding is using illegal pesticides, okay, then in this case, the holding will be classified as red. Or if the holding is using moderately or slightly hazardous pesticide without taking specific measures to mitigate environment or health related risk with its use, fewer than two from, from each category. Then in this case, the holding will be classified as, as red. So based on the set of questions, like for other um, 
sub indicators we collect this information from the from the respondent we ask them as to whether they are using pesticide obviously as you can see here the answer is yes predominantly yes for for all agriculture holding the one um, we selected from bangladesh pilots which is expected this holding is using highly or extremely hazardous or illegal pesticides and is taking three measures from the environmental group and two measures from the health group okay and hence this holding is classified as unsustainable because in this case as you can see here as you can see here if you are using highly or extremely hazardous pesticides or illegal pesticides you are by default classified as as red only if you are using moderately or slightly hazardous pesticide we then go into into the adoption of the measures related to health and environment okay holding two they use pesticide and uh, they are using moderately or slightly hazardous pesticide so we then ask about the set of measures it's is uh using two measures from both the groups and hence it is classified as yellow and so on okay as you can see here for holding 12 it's using pesticide it's using moderately or slightly hazardous pesticides it's adhering to four measures from environment out of seven and three from health out of three and hence we classified it, it as desirable and last step remains the same like for other indicators we um, aggregate the areas classified as green yellows and red we divide it by the nationally representative agriculture area to estimate the proportions So again, the questions that are asked in a um, SDG 241 survey module is, did this agriculture holding use any pesticide for crops or livestock production? The answer could very well be yes or no. If yes, we go to the second question. What type of pesticide did this agriculture holding use? Moderately or slightly hazardous, highly or extremely hazardous or illegal pesticide. Now these terms moderately or slightly hazardous highly or extremely hazardous as i mentioned earlier have been defined by who world health organization in their guidelines and we have added instructions for the enumerator while he is asking this question he will explain to the farmer as to what he means by moderately or slightly hazardous or highly or extremely hazardous okay so this explanation is provided while the enumerator is administering this question to the interviewee or the respondent for him to get the appropriate responses. And then we ask question about, you know, the health related measures and the environment related measures and see to what extent this holding is adopting those, uh, those practices. A question about as to whether the holding adopts specific measure to avoid environment related risk. If the answer is yes, we go below to the set of measures. Now, in the in the criteria, in the presentation, I showed you seven environment related measures and three health related measures. Now, over here, for analysis sake, we have broken down the seven measures into into 12 okay this is just for the sake of simplicity um, to to better provide information to the interviewer so based on the on the set of information collected 
to this question we then start classifying the agriculture holdings and its agricultural land area um, sustainability statuses so holding one use of pesticide yes type of pesticide use moderately or slightly hazardous adherence to the health related measures out of three one adherence to the environment related measures out of 12 3 and here we see okay, the overall result for all agriculture holdings based on their usage of pesticides the type of its usage and the measures taken to mitigate its negative impact on the environment and health of the people who are working on the holding. And based on this information, using the, the logic for sustainability criteria, which I explained to you, we assign the holdings sustainability statuses, green, yellow, and, and red. So for example, holding one, usage of pesticide, yes, moderately or slightly hazardous pesticide, environment related measure three, health related measure one, and hence this holding is classified as non-sustainable. Because as you can see here, the yellow condition says that the holding should um, take at least two measures from, from both categories. And in this case, it is only adopting one measure from health. So it is classified as non-sustainable. This holding on the flip side is adopting two measures each from both groups and hence it is classified as acceptable. And this holding is not using pesticides at all for its agriculture production. So by default, this holding is classified as, as desirable and so on. And the last step, as I mentioned earlier, remain the same. We classified the agriculture holding and its agricultural land area, sustainability statuses. We add up the areas classified as green, yellows, and reds. We divide by the nationally representative area to estimate these proportions. So I, I, I stop here. So, okay. So the last sub indicator within the environmental dimension is use of agro biodiversity supportive practices. The dimension is environment. The theme is biodiversity. The coverage is all farm types and the reference period is last calendar year. Now, in terms of um, the biodiversity sub indicator, it was subject of discussion and refinement in 2019 as part of the 2020 comprehensive re review of the global indicators framework. So we involved a country led working group, which was coordinated by Canada with Brazil, USA, Argentina, Chile, France, and Russia as members. And after an year long discussion and consultations, toward the end of 2019, a compromise consensus on, on this sub-indicator criteria were reached after which it was tabled again for interagency and expert group on sustainable development goals review, where the group re-approved and re-endorsed the methodology of this particular sub-indicator in November 2019. From methodological perspective, the sub-indicator measures the level of adoption of agro-biodiversity supportive practices by the farm at ecosystem, species, and genetic levels for both crops and livestock. Now, one important point is that specifically in case of this sub-indicator, the scope is the entire area of the agriculture holding as opposed to other sub-indicators for which the denominator was agriculture land area. So this is an important consideration. Now, 
based on whether organic agriculture is wild, widely um, practiced in a country, two set of criteria are proposed. Okay, One for countries practicing traditional agriculture and another one for countries where organic agriculture is practiced. So the countries where no organic agriculture is practiced, we propose the following practices or set of information that we are able to retrieve from the questions that we have already asked within the agriculture survey model. Okay. So this is the mix of practices as well as other information that, uh, that is used um, based on the data collected using the questions in the agriculture survey. So I'm not going to go into the details again of uh, these, uh, these uh, measures or practices because these are, again, let me emphasize, these are well explained in the methodological note as well as the support documents. Now, as you can see here, we, I, I mentioned earlier that we are proposing two sets of measures, one for country with organic certification and one for country with no organic certification. So for a country with no organic certification, we propose five measures. For countries with organic certification, we propose six measures. The five remain the same. We only add one additional, which is agriculture holding produce agricultural products that are organically certified or its products are undergoing the certification process. It applies only to countries or to agriculture holdings with, with certification systems or processes in place. Okay. There could very well be instances in, in uh, you know, there could be a country where some holdings are practicing organic agriculture and others are not. In this case, for the, for the holdings that have organic certification, or they are in process of getting one. In this case, we will, we will ask those holding and, 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 and assess them based on six criteria. The holdings with no organic certifications in the same country will be assessed based on the, based on the five criteria, okay? Now, again, I mean, we, we had to um, come up with a sustainability criteria or thresholds for uh, for for this particular sub indicator and the way it's structured is uh, for countries or agriculture holdings with organic certificates in place it will be assigned green color if it meets at least three of the of the six criteria it will be assigned yellow color if the holding meets at least one of the six criteria and the holding will be assigned red status if it is if it meets none of the six criteria the countries with no organic certification the holding will be classified as green if it meets at least two of the five criteria the holding will be classified as yellow if it is um, if it meets one of the five criteria and it will be classified as red if it meets none of the criteria now, as I was mentioning, this indicator was subject to further refinements in 2019. Um, so it got changed significantly um, uh, since the pilots that we conducted in Bangladesh back in 2018 and 19, early 19. And hence, we don't have actual numbers to show to you for this particular sub indicator. But in any case, we will show you the, the example in the Excel sheet that we have developed. So let me introduce you to the, to the participants. So for this presentation, our colleague Flavio Bolliger, uh, is a colleague of the Statistics Division of FAO, will be presenting now the, the SDG 241 in the context of the Agri-Survey Program and the 50 by 2030 initiative. So Flavio has a degree in agronomy and another one in economy. He was the coordinator of agriculture uh, of the Brazilian Institute of Geographic and Statistics from 2003 to 2015. 
And then at the FAO, he contributed to the implementation of the global strategy to improve agriculture and rural statistics as the research coordinator. And, <clears throat> sorry. and since 2018, he acts as technical coordinator in the survey team in the statistics division of FAO. He has experience in economy, focusing on the social economic statistics, acting on agricultural statistics, agribusiness, economic statistics, and sustainable development. Flavio, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Stefania. Welcome. But good morning. Uh, well, uh, today I will talk with you uh, about the um, uh, um, the production of the indicator two for one in the context of uh, two different um, standard uh, programs and surveys uh, promoted by FAO. Um, first, uh, we are talking about this agri survey program, that's, uh, uh, and then uh, the fifth by third initiative, these two programs. Um, much of, many of you know that. Um, important initiatives uh, have been taken to improve uh, agricultural statistics uh, across the world. Uh, these initiatives start uh, in 2008, the, the, the main idea uh, in the context of this, uh, the, the price crisis. Uh, we had at that time an evaluation about the, the, the offer of data and quality of data on agriculture around the world. And um, the conclusion of this uh, evaluation is that uh, uh, the quality and the quantity uh, of statistics was declining. And, and uh, uh, with that, uh, a group of countries uh, proposed to the United Nations to uh, implement a, a, a rude program named Global Strategy to Improve Agricultural Statistics. Um, it's 15 years uh, pro project. In the, in the first phase, dedicated to capacity building, but mainly to uh, methodological development. And, and in the context of the global strategy, uh, several guidelines was produced. In particular, one guideline uh, uh, named agriculture uh, agris. Né? Uh, agricultural uh, uh, integrated uh, survey. So that is a complete um, proposal in terms of, of strategy to implement um, a, a multi-purpose agricultural survey going beyond the traditional uh, agricultural statistics. So, uh, and this AGRIS methodology uh, uh, was implemented in, in different countries in a kind of pilot, five countries. Uh, and uh, in nowadays, this uh, uh, a new project named Fifth by Third Initiative uh, have the idea to scale up this for 50 countries uh, in. in in the world uh, uh, until 2030. So, um, I, I, as I said, uh, this um, the systems uh, also collect data and social, technological, environmental uh, aspects of, of the agricultural activities. He, uh, uh, you can find. All this information on, on the link in the in this presentation. Uh, so, uh, as I said, some countries uh, we are working with some countries in two different projects in the agri survey program: uh, uh, Cambodia, Senegal, Uganda, uh, receiving technical assistance and financial support and Armenia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Nepal, and Uruguay, uh, who had uh, support on uh, just on techno assistance. The first project su uh, supported by USAID and the second for Gates Foundation. And now 
the feedback to administrative uh, um, include uh, both technical support and financial support. And the, uh, the onboarding process is, is running now. Some, uh, some uh, of the countries uh, before supported by us and by the um, uh, LSMS ISI program uh, uh, are considered pre-approved. And um, um, uh, the onboarding process is ongoing. And, and new countries are, uh, uh, are selected in the, in the beginning of this year to join. Uh, the FAO initiative also uh, can support countries on agri's methodology uh, uh, through TCPs and, uh, and across the world, different countries are having this support also. The AGRIS methodology is, uh, as I said, a, a multi-proposed system uh, to collect data, uh, regular data, yeah, and define a, a cycle of 10 years where uh, basic data is collected every, every year and uh, different rotating models are applied in different years in order to avoid uh, excessive burden for the respondent and according the frequency need of the data. Uh, the standard proposal uh, is like this, uh, going to, uh, uh, to the field with the model on economic uh, order each year and labor in each five years, methods and environment in each five years and uh, as well machinery and equipment and assets. So this is a schema propo proposed for, for uh, in the AGRIS uh, handbook. Uh, the the, um, the AGRIS handbook uh, has a standard questionnaires, uh, standard models for all these themes and uh, annual uh, questionnaire should be built uh, combining different models and, and, and is a kind of menu of questions of teams that uh, should be chosen uh, by the country uh, in terms to do the customization of the, of the instrument. Well, uh, the AGRIS handbook was developed in 2017 and published in the beginning of 2018. Uh, in that time, the 241 uh, indicator was not uh, finalized or completely defined, the characteristics of the 241. So uh, the, um, the standard questionnaires do not include all the requirements for 241, but some requirements, yes, are there and uh, because of that uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, colleagues uh, Abab uh, uh, and Stefan and other colleagues we develop uh, um, uh, a, a document who most shows what adaptations should be done to uh, cover the requirements for 241 using the aggressive standard uh, questionnaire. Uh, and two options are, are discussed. One is just uh, add to the core model, the, mo uh, the standard model of, for every year of 241, uh, of uh, AGRIS, uh, the requirements. Uh, for that, it's necess necessary to, to do 32 additions questions. Or uh, another uh, possibility is to go to, uh, to the field with the requirements uh, distributed uh, among the two different models, the economic or, uh, and the production methods and environment model. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the economic model has uh, 
a series of the information already required for 241 and uh, as well the environment model. In this case, the additional questions, we need less additional questions, 13 for the economy, economy and 10 for the producing methods. So uh, uh, a proposal uh, absolutely integrated, including all the requirements uh, is already uh, developed. Uh, and can be then uh, uh, using the agri instruments in two ways. Uh, it's important to say that uh, uh, depends on the, the 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 system adopted the current in terms of uh, frequency of models. In the in the second options, the all sub indicators of two for one. Uh, to complete the all subjugate, sub you need two two rounds, né? two two years. Uh, in the first case, uh, all the uh, indicators is produced in the same year. Um, <clears throat> uh, here you can see uh, uh, the di distribution of the uh, the eleven sub indicators according uh, uh, to to the. Uh, different options. So, uh, so he, he, going to the field with uh, uh, the PME model is an option the same year, and all, all the kit can be collect uh, using uh, uh, adding the requirements for economic and, and social uh, in the core model. The second option, we in the year, one year, collect the indicators uh, one, two, three, nine, ten, eleven. So the economic and, and social indicator in one year, and the um, the environment indicate sub indicators in the next year uh, when uh, the environment model uh, will be in place. This is a solution proposed by uh, by us. Well. The fifth by third initiative, as I said, is, is a partnership uh, involving uh, as impl uh, institution, uh, implementing institution FAO, World Bank, and IFAD. Uh, has more or less the same proposal of our AGRIS program to, to uh, improve the quality of the um, uh, agricultural data uh, on, on the, uh, in, in, in the national level. But uh, the theory, but explicitly uh, uh, aim to, to, to support countries on the production of the uh, zero hunger indicators, including IE, uh, including the two for one uh, and, and the productivity and income indicators as well uh, and, and gender indicators. So uh, the main goal or in fifth by 30, is to, to support countries on, on, on production of the, the uh, SDGs. Uh, well, here you have more or less uh, um, the, the schema that uh, you, we are going to follow the next years. So uh, this year we have six pre-approved country, countries and uh, two new countries uh, will be uh, in, included in the system. Um, in, in 2002, other five countries and other uh, six pre-approved countries. And in 2013, uh, 23, 23 um, others, other nine countries. So uh, with that, we are, we are, the, we are going to to cover 50 countries until the end of 2030. Uh, uh, for 5 by 30, I, uh, uh, additional work on developing instruments and methodology uh, was done, and uh, a bit different uh, uh, systems were proposed. Uh, in, in this case, in Fit by Touch, we, uh, we offer two programs. One program named Agricultural Survey Program is very similar uh, we saw on Agris, uh, having a core model to, uh, to be collected 
to collect data with the Scrum model every year with basic data and three different models. The first name income, labor and productivity. The second production methods and environment. And the third machine recruitment and assets. So, uh, and the, the second program is named Integrated Cultural and Rural Survey Program. Uh, it's similar to the, the previous, but uh, has a, 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 an additional model, possible model, named Income and Living Conditions, uh, Living Standards. Uh, uh, that collect data uh, on the households linked to the holding, agricultural like holding. Uh, in this case, also a special strata on non-farm households in rural areas are selected also. Uh, in this way, uh, uh, also uh, rural development indicators can be produced and, and uh, information relating agriculture and um, social Characteristics of the producers are, are possible to, to, to be produced. So, is a, a, a have this additional uh, aim uh, to complete uh, the integrated is integrated survey, also co covering the household as a, a unit observation beyond uh, in addition to the hold, the holding and cultural holding. Oh. Um, so the uh, feedback by touch uh, survey tools include uh, uh, questionnaires, uh, the core questionnaire, uh, and, and, and the, the, the other four questionnaires, uh, as I, 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 I said. Uh, the income, labor, and productivity correspond to the economic and labor on agris. Uh, this uh, non-farm income in living standard household questionnaire um, is this, this is special one for household, and then machine equipment assets and production methods and environment questionnaires. Uh, it's important to highlight that in the case of FIPA 30, uh, uh, the, the, um, the standard questionnaire is already integrated, the core and the the rotating models are integrated in a, in a complete questionnaire. So all the core questions, the basic question is integrated in the ELP, May and PS, PME questionnaires. And different variations were produced. A, a variation of the instrument for data collection uh, using the um, one visit approach, that means one operation in the year collecting data uh, about the previous year, uh, or uh, in, May, in two or more visits. Uh, in this case, uh, we have also instruments to collect data uh, separately from the major and mi minor season and post-planting and post-harvest questionnaire. Um, so it's important to say that uh, in the case of FIPAR 30, the all requirements for two fund is, is already integrated in the tools developed because it was developed a few years ago. So, and, and again, you have the, uh, the solution was integrated is again, uh, considered two years on data collection. Uh, as, uh, in the first year with ELP and ELS questionnaire collecting uh, the economic and social indicators. And in the second year, uh, when going to the production methods and environment questionnaire, collecting the environmental sub indicators. So that's the, the solution also implemented, already implemented in the instruments. Um, this is uh, just an example. No? Uh, this uh, question on land tenure uh, is included in LP. Uh, uh, D 
different questions are distributed in different sessions because uh, also in the fifth by thirty the approach is collected in the level uh, in the parcel level, so the the information on tenor is collected parcel by parcels uh, when in Argus is uh, about the holding as a whole and 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 so on. Uh, uh, you can see here the, uh, the the questions included in the PME questionnaire uh, to cover different aspects of the environment uh, dimension of the 241 uh, already integrated in the in different sessions of the PME questionnaire. Uh, Uh, well, uh, one document on, on explaining all these uh, solutions for Argus and for Fit by 30 and how to com uh, compute to for one using the variables collect on the systems uh, is uh, ongoing. We are, we are fin finalizing this document and, and with all these uh, aspects covered. Uh, the measurement approach, the data collection approach, the using a standalone questionnaire and integrated survey with uh, annex with all the uh, questionnaire proposed. And this is uh, this document is, is about to be published by us. Well, that's uh, I have for you. Uh, I'm a bit for any question. I think uh, I can thank you uh, a lot for this intervention and for sharing uh, this presentation as usual uh, at the SDG 241 virtual training. So thank you and uh, enjoy your day, Flavio. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, while Flavio is stopping sharing the, his screen, uh, I think so it's uh, 8.42 today. Uh, we have been a little bit late, 10 minutes late according to the, to the plan. Um, we close the, uh, the session for today. We have seen all, almost all the environmental dimensions. So tomorrow, of course, uh, Aspandial will continue where he left. So he will show you the Excel uh, for the, the last uh, um, sub-indicator. And then we will move to the social dimension with the last three sub indicators. Um, there is a question in the chat or oh, no, sorry, it was just a thanks for, for Flavio. So thank you again for having participated to this second day and see you tomorrow at 5 a.m. sharp again. Bye bye. Have a nice day, evening or have a nice bye. night. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.